Don't get pinched by a Dungeness Crab. Let's talk seafood. In today's video, we're gonna be talking Dungeness crab. We're gonna show you how to catch it, how to cook it, how to clean it, some of the gear you might need to get out there and, uh, and, and find some. And uh, we're also gonna answer some questions. We're gonna have some surprises for you, so stay tuned. There's also recipes at the end. Uh, it'll be good, yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right into your questions. First question is from Bob. Bob writes in and says, what does a crab weigh? That's a good question. It, generally a crab, the ones that they're getting now out of the ocean, they're about a pound and three quarter to two pounds. We've seen some three pound crabs, but not very often. So, you know, we just tell everybody about a pound, three quarter, two pounds. Sounds good. Next question we have is from Jenny. Jenny asks, when is the best time to buy crabs and is an R month bad for crabs? Well, if you're on a tight budget, Jenny, December is usually when the cheapest price on the crab is because that's when the, it opens. The Dece December through August is a crabbing season for the commercial people. R months, you know, we've heard that before. And, you know, you're asking us, and it's really hard to say because I don't even know how to tweet on this thing. So we're going to have to turn that over to our expert. They're, she's probably the one that can really fill you in on the R month. It sounds maybe like an old wives' tale, but... Could be. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We, yeah. So let's go to the expert and find out. Yep. You boys are morons. That's oysters. You don't want to eat oysters in a month with Oz because they've been breeding and they get all mushy. But crabs, you can eat them any month. Doesn't matter what letter they have in them. You boys are a special kind of stupid, aren't you? But I do have one word, wise word of advice for you, and that's you don't want to go swimming after you've been eating for at least an hour. Oh, wow. Well, I hope the wives' tale helped you, Jenny, on this question because it sure helped us. And yeah, it, we took a lot of heat for you, Jenny. Yeah, she you kind of owe us. Put on us that in our one. place. Wow. <laughs> but anyway, it's time to go crabbing, and we know how to do that. That's right. <laughs> you find yourself at the dock, and you look around and you go, what can I do down here? Why don't we try crabbing? Those clothes are nice that you're wearing, but you know, we could probably do a little bit better than that. Let's see. Well, I have an idea. Up there. Now you're starting to look like a crabber on the dock. Now the next thing that you need is probably you're gonna need a license and a crab measurer. Yeah. Now you're doing what you need. Now the next thing we need to do is get you a crab ring. Let's, yep, there it is. We got your crab ring, or you could use, oh, maybe how about a crab trap? Yeah, a little bit bulky, but it's something that might work for you. Keep the crabs from eating your bait. Now let's get you a, let's get you a bucket. How about that? Yep, now we got you a bucket. And now, probably, you're going to need some bait. Let's see, what kind of bait can we get? Oh, yeah, that's it. Ooh, the stinky bait. That'll work. Now you're ready for crabbing. Well, now that you're ready, let's prep that crab trap. Now, there are a few minor things that you need to do. It's not rocket science. On this one, we have a bait bag, or you can use a bait pin, or you can use a crab trap. The crab trap is a little bit safer to keep the bigger animals out of it. The crab ring's a little easier to pull up and down. So what we need to do is we need to put the bait in the bait bag, and then just gear that in place, tie it down, 
make sure that you hang on to that line before you throw your trap in because you might just lose it. Now let's see how this guy is doing. Yep, just drop it right in the water, let it sink to the bottom. Now what you have to do is do the jig. That always brings the crab in. Alrighty. Wait a little while. Some people like three minutes, five minutes. It just depends on you. You're the crabber. At your choice, you can pull it up or not. Now when you pull it up, let's see what you can get out of there. Well, that looks like a good haul. You got some red rock. You got some Dungeness crab in there. Now the red rock, you can keep male, females, any size, 24 a day with your license. But the Dungeness crab in Oregon, they need to be five and three quarter inches. And measure inside those points. Don't go point to point. Make sure that they're male. You check that. Check it with your gauge. Oh, it's a keeper. So now you got one for supper. Now here's another one. Yep, it looks pretty good too. By golly, that's a nice crab that you have. Yep, once we get that measure out there, yep. You just take your crab, put them in a bucket. That one, I think we'll just leave that for seed. What he can do is he can tell all his little buddies out in the ocean, the dinner bell, come on out and get it. Put it back in the water and pull it up again as you need to until you get your limit. Good job. Now that you've caught your Dungeness crab, let's cook them. You're only going to need a few things to do this. A pot big enough to fit the crabs and a non-iodized salt like the Fisherman's Wharf brand crab boil. Add your salt to the water, get a rolling boil, then you're ready to add your crab. The Fisherman's Wharf brand crab boil salt is ratioed out for two gallons of water, so it will seem like a lot of salt, but it will sweeten the meat. The USDA recommends cooking your crabs on a hard boil for 20 minutes. You'll notice that your crabs have now turned from a deep purple color to a nice red color. You're ready to give your crabs a cold bath, and this will help keep the meat from sticking to the inside of the shell. After your cold bath, you can pull your crabs out and you're ready to clean them. To clean the crab, just pop the top off by holding the leg portion and pulling the back off. Find the hole where the mouth is located and break that portion off. Remove the lungs and then remove the tail, which is underneath, tells you if it's a male or female. Be careful of the little spines. And once that's removed, you're ready to remove the crab butter or the guts. Now some people like to eat this or you can just throw it away. Once that's all been removed, you're ready to rinse that crab out and clean all the little crab butter portions away from the meat. To crack the crab in half, grab each half and pull them together. Now that your crab is broken in half, you can stop and serve or continue on to the shaking or picking process. The shaking process gets its name from what it looks like. A sturdy bowl will aid in the process. Gently tap the legs against the side of the bowl. Now with your picked meat, you can add it to soups, salads, make crab melts, or you can make crabby patties with it. We told you there was going to be a surprise at the end of the video. We're going to make crabby patties with a twist. Yes. And wait until you see this. It's something that I learned way back in my young childhood in the 50s. How long, how long ago was that? <laughs> I can't remember. It was way back. Way back. Way, way back. Way, way, way back.
Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like us, subscribe, write in the comments below, ask us any questions, give us some ideas for videos, things that you would like to see. We're going to be putting out recipes. Uh, we're going to be showing you the whole ins and outs of the seafood world. We're the fish market guys. You can come down and check us out at uh, Fisherman's Wharf. You can also find us online at Fisherman'sWharfOregon.com. And remember, we're open six days a week and we'll be there. The only day that we're not there is on a Monday. So if you show up on Monday, you're out of luck. We're not there. <laughs> we're probably making a video like this. That's right. And I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy. Bye. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.